Okay, here we are on page seven. On page seven, this is similar to the last problem we did on page six, where we're gonna do a highly challenging problem where after you do the binomial expansion, they ask you to multiply it times another binomial, which is different. Now, um, notice that when they ask you to do this, the binomial expansion that they ask you to do is not particularly difficult. If they just asked you to do this binomial expansion and expand it completely, it wouldn't be a big deal, right? The only thing that makes it hard is they're asking you to multiply by binomial afterwards, and then they ask for one specific term. So they're saying basically you don't have to do, you know, the complete expansion, just expand one term. Okay, so what we're going to do again is a cross between, um, you know, avoiding algebra and, and being smart about it. Okay, you could do this complete with algebra, but I think the, the complexity and the chance for error is, is too high for most students. Okay. All right, so first we're going to take 3x plus 1 to the ninth and expand it a little bit, okay? Not completely, but just enough to see which parts are important. And then afterwards, we're going to do loudest multiplication times 2 minus x. Notice when I did 2 minus x, I put the higher degree negative x on top, and I put the plus 2 on the bottom, just so that I have a chance to maybe do an easy combination of like terms, okay? All right, so let's do the expansion of this. And remember, we are not going to, we're going to try to avoid doing a lot of extra work. So first I'm just going to do, um, you know, the, the n value down to zero. This wide paper is useful. Okay. And then we make this into the Pascal's triangle coefficients by doing nine chooses nine, nine chooses eight, nine chooses seven. I won't do all these because maybe we'll figure out we don't need them anyway. Okay, and then uh, and then we're gonna do the a term, which is three x. So we do three x to the ninth, three x to the eighth, three x to the seventh. Actually, I'm making a mistake here because I don't really need to do the three yet, right? I'm just gonna do x for now. X to the sixth, x to the fifth. I'm not doing the three because I'm not going to fully develop every single term. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we wanted. We wanted the coefficient x to the sixth term, but that's after we multiply it times two minus x, right? Now, we know that some of these powers are too big, right? X, this is already x to the ninth. If we multiply it by a constant and an x term, it's going to be like x to the tenth, x to the ninth, right? So we know that this is too big, so ignore this one. X to the eighth, X to the eighth, that's also way too big already. X to the seventh, already too big. X to the sixth, okay, this one has some chance, right? This one has some chance. X to the fifth, this one has some chance because if you multiply X to the fifth times uh, X, then it would be X to the sixth, right? X to the fourth, actually it's too small, right? X to the fourth times X would only be X to the fifth. X to the fourth times two, it would be too small also. So, you know, if we think about it a little bit, we only are gonna use these two terms and the other terms are, terms are too big or too small, okay? So let's fully develop these, these two terms now. So it would be nine chooses six, three X to the sixth, and nine chooses five, three X to the fifth. So let's see, nine chooses six. What is nine chooses six? Nine chooses six. It is 84. And what is nine chooses five? It is 126. Okay, so let me write those down. So this would be 84, and this would be 126. So 84, 3 to the 6, x to the 6, and 126, 3 to the 5th, x to the 5th. So let's see, what is 3 to the 6 and 3 to the 5th? 3 to the 5th is 243. 3 to the 6th is 
729. So let's do 729 times 84. That would be 61236. 61236x to the 6. And then this one here would be 3 to the 5th, which is 243. 243 times 126. which is 3618. 3618 x to the fifth. Okay, now we only have, we only have a couple to check out. Okay, so we can make a little bit more space for us. All right, so the higher term would be 61236 x to the sixth, and the slightly lower order term would be 3618 x to the fifth. And then, so if we multiply this times negative x, it would give us negative 1, 6, 1, 2, 3, 6, x to the 7th. And if we multiply this times this, it would be something terrible. So let's... <laughs> 1, 2, 2, 4, 7, 2. 1, 2, 2, 4, 7, 2, x to the 6th. And then what about this times this? It would be negative 36, 1, 8, x to the 6th, right? Yes. And then if I multiply this times this, we're looking for x to the 6th. So this is going to be an x to the 5th term. So we know we don't need it, right? This would be 2 times that, x to the 5th. So unnecessary. So we have two contributions. We have these two contributions. These combine together to make the x to the 6th term. So we do 1, 2, 2, 4, 7, 2, minus 36, 1, 8. There's 36, 1, 8. 91, 8, 5, 4. So our answer is 9, oops, 91, 8, 5, 4, x to the 6th, positive, right? I added those two like terms together. And I'm done. Okay, now we're going to do number eight, and we're going to do it using the algebra method for this video. So if you want to see the non-algebra method, go watch the other video for page seven. Okay, so x squared y minus 2y squared. So what's the a, what's the b, what's the n? So the a value here is x squared y. The b value here is negative 2y squared, and the n value is 6. Okay, and what's the R value? We don't know. Okay, and let's just write down the, um, oops, let's write down the, the um, general term formula. Now, in the formula booklet, the general term formula looks a little bit different than what the book has. Uh, let me just write the book version here really quick. This is the one you've been using a lot, n minus R, b to the R, right? And then the, the one in the formula booklet looks like this. But you can see it's pretty much the same thing, right? Okay, so we've written the general term formula down. Either ones, we can use either one. Uh, basically, it says Pascal's triangle coefficient, and then the A, a uh, uh, expression, the B expression with the appropriate exponents. Let's just fill in what we know. We're going to fill in the A value, we're going to fill in the B value, and we're going to fill in the n equals 6 here, and we're just going to leave everything else as it is. So n chooses r, it would be 6 chooses r. We don't know what r is yet. A values is x squared y, make sure you put it in parentheses. n minus r would be 6 minus r. And then the b value would be negative 2y squared to the r value. And we don't know what that is yet. And uh, this says to find the term in which x and y are raised to the same power. So we're going to set this equal to some coefficient. We don't know what it is. With x to the something and y to the something, where both of these exponents are the same. Okay. So let's uh, simplify the x's and the y's here and see uh, what we can figure out about that, okay? So we're going to leave the Pascal's triangle coefficient 
um, for now out of it. And we're going to pay attention to the exponent parts, which would be this, 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 and this. And we're going to ignore the coefficient. Okay. So uh, let's simplify x squared y to the 6 minus r. It would be x squared to the 6 minus r and y to the 6 minus r. And then y squared to the r would be y to the 2r, right? Now we have x term, we have the x expression, we have the y expression. Let's combine the y's together. So y to the 6 minus r times y to the 2r would be y to the 6 minus r plus 2r, so y to the 6 plus r, right? And then the x exponent is going to be 2 times 6 and 2 times r, so it would be 12 minus 2r. And then we know that that's going to be equal x to the something, y to the something, where the two exponents are equal to each other. Oh, so you mean 12 minus 2r and 6 plus r are equal to each other? Okay, well, that's um, not too hard to figure out. Okay, so that means 12 minus 2r equals 6 plus r. We can write that algebra equation out. Um, combine the like terms. So let's add 2r to both sides. If we do that, we're going to have um, 3r on the, on the right side. And then we can also uh, subtract 6 from both sides. And so the left side is going to become 6, and then the right side is going to become 3r. So r is equal to 2. Okay. So we figured out our r value. Now that we have our r value, all we need to do is put it back into all the occurrences of r in our general term formula. So it's going to be 6 chooses uh, 2 is our Pascal's triangle coefficient. We could do that in you know, the, the calculator. Um, x squared y to the 6 minus 2 would be x to the 4th. And negative 2y squared to the r would be to the squared. So that would be, so 6 chooses 2. It turns out if you put that in the calculator, it would be 15. Remember, Pascal's triangle uh, for row 6 is 1, 6, 15, 20. So the r equals 2 value is going to be 15. So this is going to be 15. And then x squared to the 4th is x to the 8th. y to the 4th is y to the 4th. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. And then y squared squared is y to the 4th. And now we can see that we indeed are correct. The y to the fourth combined to become y to the eighth. So it turns out that this, um, the x's and the x and the y, I'm sorry, I just did, I need to combine 15 and 4. So 15 times 4 is going to be 60. 60. So I'm going to have 60, x to the eighth, and then the y to the fourth combined with each other is going to be y to the eighth also. So there we go. We did it using algebra um, and no trial and error. Okay, so now we're doing 9a. Um, this is a highly unusual problem. As long as you don't panic and you just use what you know, there's no reason why you can't get some or all the points on it. The third term of 1 plus x to the n is 36x squared. Find the fourth term. You might say, oh my God, look at this. I don't know what the end value is. This is the first time this ever happened. Well, sometimes it's going to happen. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to copy the problem down here. So they're saying 1 plus x to the nth expands. And you're going to have the first term. You don't know what it is. You're going to have the second term. You don't know what it is, and you're going to have the third term, which is 36x squared, and they want to know the fourth term. Well, to figure out the fourth term, you have to figure out what n is. And so how do you figure out what n is? Well, we know something about what this looks like, right? Let's do our general term expansion or our expansion. Uh, you know, don't get scared about that I said general term. You don't have to know a general term. Just do your Pascal's triangle coefficient. Of course, you can't actually write your Pascal's triangle terms because we don't know what n is, right? Okay, and then, oh, look at that. That's nice. The a value is 1, so it doesn't contribute anything to these terms, so we can just forget it, right? The x value is the b term, and it starts uh, with an exponent of 0, and so on, right? 
Now, what is n choose a zero? You're like, n choose a zero? I can't do that on the calculator. There's, a, there's an n in it. Okay, remember, anything chooses a zero is one, right? The first number in Pascal's triangle is always one in any row. So this is one, and this is one. So it's just one. Okay. What about n chooses one? Oh my God, I can't do n chooses one on the calculator because, you know, the n. Remember, the second number of Pascal's triangle is always the n value, right? So it's n times x. Okay, so the second term is n times x. The third term, okay, we do not know what n chooses two is, but we could write out the formula, right? What's the formula? It looks something like this. Okay, copy that out of the formula booklet, times x squared, okay? And now we can set that equal to 36x squared. And then we can see that, oh, actually the 36 is the Pascal's triangle coefficient. 36 is the Pascal's triangle coefficient. So that means that all we need to do is figure out what n value is going to give me 36 for this thing here, right? And um, if it's easier, we could just say, okay, n chooses 2 equals 36. When does n chooses 2 equal to 36? I'm going to give you a couple ways to do it, okay? But, you know, I'm going to start out with brute force because, you know, it's not that, you know, you have a calculator. Every single calculation only takes you five seconds. So you could do it, you know, some pretty uh, low technology ways and you would still get the answer. So let's see. We'll go to math. We'll go to probability. Go to n chooses r, okay? And let's say, let's start with a pretty big number. We'll do five chooses two. Let's five chooses two. No, 10, it's not big enough. Let's jump up to like seven. Seven chooses two. Still too small. Okay, what about eight chooses two? Looks like we're getting closer though. Nope, too small. What about nine chooses two? And you're thinking, really? This is the way we're supposed to do it? Well, I can show you another way, but 36, nine chooses two, n equals nine, I'm done, right? So n equals nine. So that solves that mystery. So now, now that I know that n equals nine, it's really easy for me to figure out what the third term here is, right? Because the third term is just equal to n chooses three x cubed, right? So what's n chooses three in this case is nine chooses three. 9 chooses 3 is 84. Okay. So the answer is 84. Um, another way you could do this is you could put a bunch of numbers here. <laughs> 3, 4, in stat edit. Now you don't know how to use stat edit that much yet, but you will by the time you get to the IB exam. So you can put a whole bunch of numbers here. Oops. Okay, and then you could go up here and you could do them all at the same time. You could do, you go up to L2, you put the highlighter in L2, you do math, probability, and chooses R, and then you, you put L1 in for that, and then you put two there. Ta-da! Oh, look, it's 36, okay? So that's a high-tech way of doing it, but um, it, it didn't really take any less time than just doing it the hard way, right? That's it.